In this rapid massing practice, we're going to look at how we can schedule the information while working on a massing study to figure out if our building is somewhere close to the gross floor area limits that we have. So I'm going to start with the practice file in the handout folder and I'll save it as usual. I'll save as project and just replace the start with the first three letters of my last name. If I have a look at the 3D view, I see the buildings I've been creating. I've only applied mass floors to the two um, buildings, not the four extra shapes. So we'll only be seeing those pop up in the schedule. To create a schedule, I go to my View tab, Schedule and Quantities, and I want to create a schedule of mass floors. So I find my M, get mass floor, and the name of this one is going to be Gross Floor Area GFA Schedule. And the field I'd like to bring in would be the mass family. The level and the floor area. There we go. I don't need to filter, I don't need to narrow down anything here. Um, sorting and grouping. I'm going to sort it by mass family and have that as a header and a footer with totals only. And then I'm going to sort it by level after that. I do want grand totals with the totals only. And yes, I do want I twice every instance. Um, the appearance, the formatting, we can play around with that afterwards. Uh, all we really need to make sure here is that our floor area is going to calculate the total. So right now it's set to no calculation. I have to turn that on. Let's calculate those totals. When I press OK, I get a schedule popping up that looks a little like this. If I don't want mass 1 to appear over and over again, just to have it appear as a header, I go back into Edit. And then under my uh, formatting tab, I highlight that and set it as a hidden field. Because it's sorting by that parameter and it's down as a header, it'll still pop up as a header over that part. And then I can rename these to whatever I would like. So if I want capital letters, uh, I can just type in here. If I want to change the appearance, I would do that over here. To add it to a sheet, I just drag it onto a sheet. So let's just make a new sheet from the template and drag that and drop it on here. If I don't want it to list one above the other, I can hit this little squiggle and use the dot to change how it displays. And if I want the total to be a little bit separate, I could drag that or click that and have it separate so that we have the total appearing on its own. So it depends how you like it to show up. Um, there's a bunch of different settings that you can look at. So in the next practice file, you'll see my final version of this schedule. I've also got a floor space um, schedule right here. And this one, I didn't get you to create it from scratch. Feel free to look at the example in the next file, but it's got a lot of custom parameters using formula. So it's a little bit advanced for the stage we're at right now. So I was just handing that out to you. Um, so to manually input this information, I go to my site plan. So we're a new site. I just click here to have a look. I'll go to the near square meter. So the area of this site is 4097. So in my floor space ratio, I type that in here. 4097. This current FSR is at zero, but when I press enter, it uses the site area and my current gross floor area to tell me what my current floor space ratio is. I would then look up the zoning information for this district schedule, and let's say the maximum is 2.0. I could click here and put in my 2.0. And that works backwards to tell me what my maximum floor area is. So this becomes a design tool where I can use it to figure out how close I am to the target and adjust. And when I adjust, this will automatically update straight away. So that's how you could use some scheduling information hand in hand with the smart elements of your Revit um, model to do a massing study that you can react to as you're working and not have to wait until the end to do the measurements. Um, in the next and last practice, we're going to look at how we can move from Revit massing to a full building and how they could interact. Thank you.